In this video, I'm going to share with you how you can manage all your information and data inside of data jar using shortcuts. Now, let me show you what I mean. So really quickly, I'm going to detach from my keyboard because right now I'm experiencing some glitching. So I'm going to say, I'm going to type in add to data jar. I'm going to click right there. I'm going to say this is, I'm going to say, yep, this is a test. This is going to be my path. I'm going to say done. I'm going to say, did it work? And I'm going to say question mark. And I'm going to say done. So now that has been stored inside of data jar. And if we come over to data jar really quickly, if I can type today, and if we scroll down, we should see, yep, this is a test right here. Did it work? Now let's say I want to change. Yep. This is a test. Maybe did it work? Isn't what I was looking for. Maybe I put the wrong data up in there, up in that specific jar. And I want to update the information inside that jar. Let me show you how I would do that. So we're going to close out a data jar and we're going to come back over here. I'm going to take it off the magic keyboard. So my keyboard will come back up and I'm going to say update data jar value. Now it's giving me a list. So I know I made it a Y to make it easy for me to find. So I say, yep, this is a test. So what would I like to store? This is pretty cool stuff. Say so done. Now I can attach it back to my magic keyboard. The keyboard goes away. Now if I bring back up data jar again, we navigate back to it. We open it up. We can see that value has been updated. Now, we can do this in dictionaries and everything. Super, super simple to do. Okay. So now let's say I wanted to just delete that value altogether. I don't, let's say I wanted to have it empty. Well, I can pull down. I could say delete. So delete data jar value. Scroll down to where it says, yep, this is a test. And now close that out. And if I come back over to data jar again, scroll down, you can see it's gone. Super duper cool. So that requires three different shortcuts. All three of them are super simple to make. I'm going to step you through it. If you just want the shortcut, all three shortcuts are linked below. So let me show you how I created those. So right here, I'm going to leave out. I'm going to open up the shortcuts app, which is going to be right here. And I'm going to hit this plus button up here. And right here, I'm going to name this so this one right here, this first one is going to be renamed to data jar. Well, let's say add to data jar and I want this to be shared. So share. And the very first thing we need to do when we're using data jar, we want to figure out what, what is it that we want to do? So I'm going to add a comment because this just helps me understand what's the goal. So I'm going to say add, add new jars. And then down here, I'm going to put required app required. I'm going to say data jar. All right. So for whatever reason, this helps my mind work. So now that I know what I want to do, I want to add new jars. So everything we're going to do is going to be located inside of data jar. So I'm going to click into data jar. And before I do that, so you could, before I do that, it's two things I need to know. I need to know what my path is going to be, and I need to know what my value or what, I'm, what information am I storing inside that jar. So let's take care of those two first. So to do this is really simple. We're just going to ask for input. So when I ask for input, I'm going to put it right here. And this is going to be what's my path. So this allows me to create whatever I want my path to be, keep it super simple or as complex as I want. I can come down here and add multiple lines, but I'm going to turn off allow multiple lines because I mean, it's a path. I don't need multiple lines. Next, I can say ask for input and put it right here. And this is going to be what would I like to store? All right, let's take out one of those likes. And now the last part, I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to come back over here, jump over to data jar. And down when I click on data jar, the only thing I need to get is set value, which is right here. We can click right here. 
and it's going to tell you exactly what it is insert or update the value at a specific path that's what we want so now i'm going to say set value and it instantly takes this and that's not what we want so actually that is what we want what would you like to store that's that's what i would like to store but i'm going to assume it didn't give me that and i'm going to delete it so now for path i could say select variable the path is right here and then i can hold that select variable again and i can change it to that now we could have went a step further and gave these their own actual variables where we could see exactly what it was but we would do that using the set variable which is right here and when we did that that would have been what we dropped inside of data drive but in this case it's kind of simple so we don't have to overly complicate it so right now we can say play and I could say data jar is the path. So let's say data jar rocks, because I know I don't have that. I'm gonna say done. I'm gonna say what I like to store. This is a pretty cool video. All right. I'm gonna say done. So now that should be inside of data jar. If we just wanted to double check, we can come over here. Scroll to the bottom and we can see data jar rocks. This is a pretty cool video. So we know that shortcut works great. Next thing is what if we want to change that to say something else? What if we want to keep the value the same, but we want to change what's in it? Well, to do that is really easy as well. So here's how we would do that. We will hit plus to add a new shortcut. Rename. And this one is going to be update data jar value. I'm just going to type share so I'll know which ones I'm sharing. So first things first, the biggest problem that you're going to have when you're wanting to update a value is you're not going to know exactly what path that value, what jar that value is in. So let's pretend like I don't know that data jar rocks is the jar that's holding the value that I want to change. Well, I need to be able to present myself a list so I can pick from that list so I'll know what I'm doing and making sure I'm changing the correct jar and not messing up one of my other jars. All right, so let me show you. So first things first, we're going to go back over to data jar. One of the easiest ways to get a list would be to get key. Now, you can always click on the eye. It's going to tell you exactly what it does. And we're going to just bring it over here. Now, it's going to default to dictionary. And if you want to get keys in dictionary, then you can do that. And you just put whatever path you want. However, that's not what I want to do. I want to use the store. Why the store? Because if we click play, we're going to see it literally gives us everything. Now, it's out of order, but it gives us everything. Now, the problem with it being out of order is it's going to be hard for us to be able to find what we're looking for, and it's going to take more time than it should. So the very first thing we want to do is put it in order. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to type filter file. Well, if I can spell, but it still popped up. We can, we're going to use filter file. Then after that, we're going to drop down to where it says sort by. We're going to click on name. And then we're going to let this stay from A to Z. If you want it backwards, you can do Z to A, but I want it A to Z. And after that, once that's done, the next thing we want to do is we want to make this a choose from list. The reason why is because if we just tried to add in something right now and we push play, look what's going to happen. It's still giving us everything where it's in alphabetical order now so we know that it's working which is fantastic but we still want to be able to choose from this list so you guessed it we're going to grab a choose from seem like i can't spell today but we're going to grab a choose from list and i'm going to drop down make sure everything looks good it does and the very next thing i want to do is i want to ask for a ask for input now, you might think an ask for input should go up here, but it reads top down. So we want to have the ask for input. Actually, we want to have the ask for input. We could have the ask for input at the very top before this start. And it really depends on you and what you want. So for me, 
what I would like to do is I would like to have the ask for input. I think I'm going to have mine right here because for me, I want, let's delete this because it's glitching out on me, but I want mine to go right here. And the reason why is because once it runs, it's going to ask me this, then it's going to ask me what my prompt is. And then after that, I can come right here. I can say, what would you like to store? Question mark. And I could leave this at multiple lines because you might have a lot you want to store. And the next thing is I want to come over to data jar. And I want to look for set value, which is right here. Again, you can click on the eye. I know I keep saying that, but I want to make sure you understand what we're doing. So you can see that this works two ways. It works. It allows us to insert or update values, but it also allows us to override stuff. So you want to be careful with this one. Okay. So I'm going to drop it right here and you can see that X for input automatically is dropped in. So this is where we want it. This is the value that we want to store. So it's going to go in our jar and this right here is the name of our jar. So what we want to do is we want to hold this and you can see that right here is a choose from menu. That's the one we want. So we can come down here and say selected item. And that's the one we want. Now, if you wanted to clear that out and you just wanted to make sure that you get the right one, you could always say, come up here and say, select variable. And we don't want this. We don't want the file because it's the whole list. What we want is the selected item, which is choose from. So that's what we want. And now when we click on play, we scroll all the way down to the bottom because we know it's in alphabetical order. And actually, it's at the top. I forgot about that. We did data jar rocks, right? Yep. So now, instead of having data, instead of having this as a cool video, I'm going to put, don't forget to like this video if you like it. And I'm going to say done. Now, if we go back over to data jar, we scroll to the bottom, we click in, we can see, don't forget to like this video if you like it. Next, if we come back over here and let's say, okay, all of that was well and good, but now I don't really need that no more because it's not really serving a purpose anymore since this video is going to be done. So I want to delete it. Well, that's easy to do too. So I'm just going to click plus and I'm going to rename it and let's say share. Although I probably should have been saying shared, but since we got share, we're just going to leave it there. And now what I'm going to do is it's going to basically be the same process again. It's going to be data jar. So we're going to get value. Get key is what we want. And we're going to say store. Next, we're going to come back over to filter files. I'm sure this should be looking familiar to you. We're going to drop it right here. We're going to remember sort by name. We can always change the sort. And then after that, we're going to go back to data jar and we're going to say delete value. Well, actually, do you remember the step that I missed? Before we can do that, we want to say choose from menu, choose from list. I'm sorry. Once we got that, we can make sure everything's working. And now we can say data jar and we can say delete value. And this path, we can hold it, select the variable. And we want to do the selected item one. And that's it. So now if I click play and I click data rock jar, then we can see that has been deleted. Now if we come back over here and we scroll down, we can see that it no longer is it exists. Now, I want, I had someone ask me, how are we able to do our alphabetical? I mean, we could sort alphabetically, but inside of data jar itself, I never found a way to actually make it happen, but I am going to delete these three since I don't need them. And it was just me 
testing everything out to make sure it worked before the video come on. So now, that's how easy it is to manipulate, add, or delete directly from Data Jar using the actual Shortcuts app itself. Now, if you have any more questions about Data Jar, let me know below. I'm more than happy to create more videos about it. In fact, I think I'm going to come out with another video that's just doing this exact same thing with dictionaries because I feel like someone might have that question, but it's literally the exact same process instead of saying store USA dictionary. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you didn't watch the original data jar video, make sure you check it out right here. Till next time. Later.